breathing right now. Amazing. Chad, Chad, what's happening here, man? A live update. A hole has been punctured through the roof. We can't see anybody yet from above, but... Mike would go on. Let's go get a scene here, folks. We've got, we've got a party on our hands here. <laughs> Humble beginnings uh, would be the honest truth to that. I was, you know, out drinking with them by a, a creek. Hanging out with them one night, they asked me to come and just have a jam. It was a legend. And I was just in a band before this that had failed. We had, we failed. No other way to word it. And one of the bands that played our very last show, they called us up and they said, hey boys, we'd like to book Nowhere uh, for another house show. We don't want to repay the favor. It was like, do you want to play this gig? But we had lost the other members and it was just Brett and I. And me and Juliana looked at each other and we said, wow, this, this might be the opportunity we're looking for. So we took the gig, um, but we didn't tell them that Noah had broken up and we didn't tell them that we were showing up as a two-piece called the Noodle Boys till the day of the party. So we show up, two weeks preparation, okay? Two weeks we show up to this party with a shitty little loop pedal and loops are all off. I think it was my first go at the drums and singing. Brett's freestyling random lyrics. It was horrible. And uh, it's a funny thing that we went to that party because our bass player, Chad, was there in his other band before. So he saw the true birth of the Noodle Boys. And they, they briefly mentioned that they lost their bass player. I was sitting there just sipping away thinking, huh, you know, I kind of, I bet I could play the bass. I, you know, I think I could do that. I kind of knew what that meant because one of them referenced uh, how, how important it is to be a unit. Trust me, I'll learn and I, I would love to be a part of the project. So that's how I got into playing the bass. I bought a bass before they actually even let me in the band and <laughs> thankfully they <laughs> accepted me. And as he was saying that he actually was making a smoothie and he tore open a bag of frozen berries which went all over the kitchen. And just the intensity of him talking about that and the sight of the berries going all over the room, I knew that I'm probably gonna be in that band. Um, and that was the beginning. That was the beginning of it all. You know, we're at the point where we're practically family, questionably dating. And I just am so grateful for the way that life and the universe has taken me down this path and I wouldn't change it for anything. One, two, three. Al dente! definitely an uphill battle to climb, but we were fortunate enough to be blessed with a, with a large house that we were able to throw house shows at. So we kind of built our own scene um, and we gained a lot of clout and we gained a lot of re respect and reputation within other bands just for the fact that we were throwing our own shows and we were getting other local bands to play and bring their crowd and kind of give us an outlet. 
So I feel like in a lot of ways, we put in a lot of legwork to fit into the scene and to kind of create our own place. So I feel like um, the hard work has definitely paid off having been here for a few years now and have been established as a, a local band. It's turned into this way of life, and I really believe that we we like to thank our fans, and you know they're they're there to support, and it, it's really special and means a lot. And yeah, I'm just super grateful for for all those times because that's what makes it worth it for me. You know, we know that people spend their time and their money to come see us, and we really want to make those nights special for them and make yeah make sure they enjoy themselves and want to come back. So yeah, we're a band for the people. start with playing festivals, release a killer album, not one that just initially does well, but one that will stand the test of time. And looking back in 20 years, I can listen to it and say that that is still great. I still believe in these songs and this still represents me. That's my, that's my greatest dream is to create something with my best friends that will stand the test of time. You know, if I could sum my time up with just one word, it would be quintessential. It was majestic. The process was super smooth and easy. The island itself, it's beautiful. The ultimate recording experience just really for us. You know, I had heard about Gabriola Island through other bands going to record there. I was working at the local music shop. Guys would come in, buy a bunch of gear, be super excited to go on this crazy adventure, and I'd be like, where are you guys going? Right. And they'd be like, we're going to Gabrielle Island to record a record, you know? And that's kind of how I first heard about it. And I was just like, wow, that looks like a cool time. You got friends. You got troubles. I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we see it through. What I like about the Noodle Boys is that I feel like we're always on the same page. when. A jam is going really well, I'll look around and I feel like everybody kind of makes eye contact with each other and, and we kind of like know instantly like okay this is one that's not just gonna like fall away but this is one we're gonna stick around and work towards. We can all feel that momentum building. can sing though. <laughs> so we thought. Outside of Brett, me, Brad, and Juliano don't really, hadn't really sung that much, like we were practicing, you know, 
doing vocal warm ups during practices and that sort of stuff. Ma me mi mo, ma me mi mo, ma me mi mo, ma me mi mo. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Yeah. And we got to the noise floor and we thought we could really sing very well and we were falling a little short. And you know, we had no idea what we were doing. Jordan came in and just kind of like a, a conductor, like he was like singing with us. He was like, you gotta hit this note, ah, ah. And we're like, oh. I mean, he was putting these puzzle pieces together that we didn't realize we were missing. And we're all like felt so much more confident, like singing with him as a group. And like, yeah, we just like felt instantly more secure with him around and kind of guiding us and coaching us. So yeah, he brought up the best of us, I would say for sure. We have a few releases of singles and uh, a sophomore EP, but I feel like as we grow uh, as musicians and as a band, we really need to put the best foot forward. So we're really, we're really pushing to make something really special in this album, our first album. You know, I really like Jordan. Jordan's a cool cat. Very smooth man, the rhythm man, the music man. And you're really gonna connect with the engineer, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan just kinda like would press record and we go into the, the, the room and just play and you wouldn't really hear much from him. Every once in a while he just kinda let us do our thing, keep doing takes after takes. And I feel like he really gave you a lot of space to, to be an artist and to do what you do. Um, and you're just able to kinda create in this safe haven of uh, you know, musical ideas. You know, he just had a really good understanding of music. You know, he had a really unique take on it. And very keen eye for things that needed to be tweaked a little bit here and there. And I really enjoyed his input, his demeanor. He's a very nice, very nice man. Mm -hmm. I, I think my favorite moment was the running to the ocean every day, like. Ultimately, the whole experience of the island was, it was like boot camp. I remember kind of being like, are we actually gonna do this? They were talking about it, you know, like going into training camp almost at the island and getting physically fit and healthy. We were doing music, we were eating healthy, we were exercising. And yeah, just waking up, going for that run to the ocean, swimming in the water every morning and running back, like, I love those moments. That just made me ready for the day. And I remember I forgot my running shoes and I was, I was just like, oh no, you know what, I have to do this with them, like it's a team effort here. And I, I was running up and down these hills in my Converse sneakers, <laughs> going to the beach every day, but yeah, it was that was my favorite part by far. project and ready to be released, I feel like it's a really beautiful moment, quintessential in any, in any artist's uh, recording experience, that's, that's how I would describe it.
Yana! <laughs> Yana the Little Buzz, you know what? She's a great friend. She's a co collaborator. Um, she's our directive artist when it comes to cinematography. Um, you know, she's just a fantastic person. Yeah, I'm Yana, I'm a camera operator, first assistant AC. Um, I, uh, I came here again like four years ago, I immigrated here and I was looking for an apartment and uh, with my partner and yeah, we, we ended up moving into the same house as the Noodlewise lived in at the time and still do and we ended up finding out there's a band living next door. I think the initial project was pretty much you guys asking me uh, Hey, you guys want to do a video? <laughs> do you want to do a video? Um, I thought, yeah, I need, I need to produce stuff and make stuff and have fun again. And um, so it was like, it was a good opportunity to get it going with you guys. And it was like, yeah, I was up for anything, anything stupid. Everybody else bites the guys in the suits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Take a ride, I'm sitting around. Baby, you're not in love. Oh, na, 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 baby, you're not in love. For Bruce was a, like, a really cool video to shoot as well. And it's this journey of a character's life from the moment he wakes up until the evening and he's going through his day regularly and has all these kind of uh, weird occurrences and run-ins with the Noodle Boys. Noodle Boy sexy video on three. <laughs> One, two, three. Noodle, Noodle Boy sexy video! person that knows the noodle boys is like you know oh my god like <laughs> I didn't know this side of you or you know it's like it's a surprise you know it's like you know but I loved it I think we filmed that over the course of six hours and it came out to be 20 seconds of the video yeah that was a good day the end of the, the music video is just like a party scene um, of like people having a good time, drinking, <laughs> dancing, um, just like good vibes and um, totally gorilla as all the other videos too. <laughs> um, and it was really heartwarming and um, special to have uh, that experience and the end product shows it because it's incredible and you know, we're just really stoked that everyone made it out and has been down to do these projects with us because people make the parties, people make the videos, people make the times. was really cool as well it was um, here shot in the house um, and it was started it started on the roof actually and then it ended up being in in the living room where I'm sitting right now <laughs> um, and uh, it's a beautiful house so why not use the location and you know make it work and yeah so the idea was to have Brett filmed at regular speed or in the video at regular speed and everybody else else around him going super fast and kind of zooming around and that was a that was a challenge. <laughs> that was like something new I've never done because it's usually the other way around. So it was a little bit messing up with my math <laughs> about frame rates. Uh, Yana was able to pull it off. She's worked her magic. I, I didn't know if we could do it, but she is a, a genius. So yeah, it worked. Like, the funnest scene of this video, I think, is the, the noodle throwing scene. I love that a lot. And the transitioning of uh, within the video, I, I really like too. Um, into a party and then like again back into something else and um... <laughs> it actually works. <laughs> oh my god, it works. you for more. Now on a Sunday morning.
Departure. Um, Departure was the first music video I initially like ended up making with you guys. Yeah, it was an exciting time. We were shooting our first video with Yana, our new found friend and videographer. And I remember that was the second day we woke up early. Somebody had scouted that location and we went there. We knew we weren't allowed to be there. But you know, that'd be hush hush, covert, roll in, roll out, pop smoke. Again, totally gorilla. <laughs> um, I just like specifically remember that we went on the roof in downtown. We're up there, we're playing. It's going great, we're super nervous, you know, we suck because we're not used to being on camera. We look really a couple of schmoobs. And sure enough, the security guard just rolls out on us while we're shooting. And we only had like two of these smoke canisters to make it look cool. And of course, we couldn't waste them. So we're filming this while the security guard is like trying to like get our attention to like stop us. And we're just like trying to pretend like he wasn't there. And um, we just like, went for it and <laughs> just got kicked up with a security guard. And uh... yeah, we'll tell. the next time you watch it, there's a security guard in the back staring us down, and we're all trying to keep it cool. <laughs> Stay ready, you know, we're, we're coming back. Don't, we haven't forgotten about you. We are coming at you soon. I know everybody's just wondering where the Noodle Boys, but we're, we're here. We're, we're not going anywhere, don't worry. All, all those fans, my mom, everybody else's mom in the band. You know. We're coming back, that's my message to everybody. Noodle Boys for life!